I have a special guest today, Howard Hughes. That's the best name in the world. He is also extraordinary at what he does. I had the pleasure of talking to Howard a few months back. And it was interesting because I really thought he was way older than he is because of his accomplishments in life. Howard is a business strategist. He will guide you to how to really improve your business. But the fact of the matter is, he's only in his 20s. I thought, you know what would be really awesome? It would be really awesome to have Howard on because he is young. And he does probably have a different point of view at ageism, ageism in our work culture, ageism in entrepreneurship, everything that it takes to, let's say, reinvent ourselves and become successful over 50. And I think having a perspective from a younger person who is a millennial, but very successful, um, is going to be an awesome show. So without further ado, I am going to welcome Howard Hughes of Howard Hughes Consulting to the show. So yeah. tell, tell me a little bit, tell the audience um, about Howard Hughes Consulting, how you started that, how you got into the business, and please disclose your age because I think that that's awesome that you're so young, so powerful, and so uh, successful. Um, and, yeah. and you're in, are you in Cincinnati? Is that where I'm you in are? I'm in St. Louis at the moment. St. Louis. Yes. Yeah. Howard Hughes Consulting started off as a small company where I would do business plans for small businesses that needed to, some growth and wanted to expand, right? So I started doing business plans for these businesses and it got to the point where they were growing. I, they were seeing a lot of success within their companies, right? Um, and I got to the point where I wanted to work with companies who are larger, do, help them with business plan marketing, help them be more uh, customer centric. And I started getting opportunities with larger companies. I signed a lot of confidentialities, but I, I would disclose a lot of these companies, but they, they're pretty... Uh, sensitive about who gives them the advice on how they grew their business or got it to a particular level. But uh, in that aspect, I uh, decided to take that to another level. I started working with other companies when as far as real estate. I got my license as far as commercial real estate. And then I started expanding companies, merging acquisition. Companies wanted to grow. They didn't just want to sell. So I help them with their, either they want to sell, they want to grow, or they want to know how much they're worth. And I help them in all those aspects. But a lot of companies fail, not because of financial reasonings, but because they don't have the right plan to succeed. And that's what we want to help them with. We want to help companies succeed through planning. So that way you won't need as much financing if you have a proper plan to be great. And that's where I come in at. I come and give innovative ideas. I come in, actually outline not just a business plan, but a blueprint to success, actual roadmap, who to contact, when to contact them and how to do it. Marketing strategists, how to really market. A lot of people go about marketing completely wrong. A lot of people want to know why their business isn't exceeding at a certain level. And typically that comes in where you're talking to the wrong group of people. You know, it's not that your business idea is bad. It's not that you're going down the wrong direction. You aren't doing things properly. You're just talking to the wrong group. If I go and try to sell consulting to a bunch of eight-year-olds, that wouldn't make much sense. You say here that... Um you have the ability to help any small or medium-sized business, let's say $10,000 to $50,000, gain $10,000 to $50,000 in additional revenue in less than 45 minutes. To me, that is like, whoa, tell me about that. And how did, how did you manage to gain all of that expertise in such a short little lifespan? So for me, it was, it, it, that was my, this is my advice. This is what I love to do. And I study the product. I study marketing and people and concepts. So when it comes to marketing and working with different companies, I understand that it's a number, it's only five or six different areas that you really need to perfect in order to increase revenue. Okay. So with these different companies, I would, it was either marketing, your sales, how to sell, who you're talking to. I've broken it all down. So finding your perspective package on marketing and who you're talking to, your positioning statement, what, is, what do you offer to who and what separates you from that person? And that's typically what it is. And then find that market, who that find that group of people and target them. I look at find out what you're best at, then find the market and then you'll draw people to you. It's a it's a market for everything. So just like your Walmarts and your targets and then you got your Aldi's, just produce your product and people are going to market to you. And then you target those people who are attracted to you. You find out what they're attracted to based on what you're offering and then just target those people. My question to you is, 
you, if you have, you said, if you have a great, if you have a product, you have a product, you have an idea, you have a service, find that first, mm -hmm. make it something you love, mm -hmm. and then go find your audience. Correct? Yep. yep. Okay. Can you dive into that a little bit more for me and, and explain that to me? Because what if you don't have an audience? We have a saying in marketing where there's no such thing as not a market. Anything that you put out is going to sell. Okay, this is saying that Walmart buys with its target. They buy with by the same rules. There's no such thing as not an audience for your product. So love what you do. Put it on the shelf and people are going to buy it. Who do you want to find it for? Who do you want it to be for? You know what I mean, you got to start somewhere. So you have to try to measure your results. So if you want to just throw it out there and see if it works for kids, then you try to see if it works for seniors. You have to throw it out there because your target market, whoever you start with, probably not who you're going to be with in the first in the next five years. So if, you, if you've probably been paying attention from when you first put the product out three years ago to now, you've probably pay, been paying attention to who's been buying the product the most. What you're saying is do some product testing. Find out who actually really loves your product. Try it out and see. But I, typically, you know, whoever you start off with is typically not the same, the same target market in the next 10 years, 5 to 10 years when you're starting your business. And that's okay well, for that to change. Yeah. That doesn't mean you failed, but that means that you've been measuring your results and you're trying to get better. What's your feeling about ageism? Did you do a little like studying up on the whole problem with ageism in our society today and how people over 50 are having to reinvent themselves and become an entrepreneur at 50, 55, 60 years old because maybe they've lost their job or something like that? Well, I think that happens when you uh, don't exit plan properly. And this is what we discussed before prior, maybe a few months back. But if you don't have a, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know where you're headed. You know, if you don't have a proper plan to exit out and transition, you think that you're going to be able to compete with these new and improved, these people who are up, born on technology and be able to keep up, you want to make sure that you are um, have a proper exit plan around 50 years old. Maybe they do have an exit plan, but then they get laid off of their job. And then statistics show that it's very difficult to find another job after 50. From my experience in owning businesses and running business and working with seniors, if you, if you don't transition properly, so um, becoming the best at what you do, whatever it is, whatever industry that you're in, say if you're in construction or whatever the case may be, you get to about 50 years old and then you're, you know, you're trying to compete with someone who's, or you're trying to take the place of someone who's just coming in 28 strong, fresh, or whatnot. If you transition properly, you should focus on um, training, duplicating yourself at that point. Transition from Increasing the player to the coach. Increasing your skills. Yeah. Yeah. Increasing your skills all the way up until that age. And then when you get to that age, nobody wants to fire you because you know how to make 50 of you. It's a lot of help, very healthy, well-working 50-year-olds. But I think that around that age, you should transition. Jay-Z, for example, okay? He's not rapping about the same things he was rapping about when he was 28. When he hit that 50 mark, you have to transition to a different perspective. Same thing, same exact thing I, with I see what you're saying. In business, okay? I see what you you're saying. You have to transition Your from a, to a different Your audience becomes role. different. <clears throat> you got to keep that in mind. Or if you grow with your audience, then you need to your product needs to grow with your audience. Sure. When you get to be 50, where do you see yourself? For me, honestly, I have, I've invested properly. I have things lined out to where I don't necessarily have to work. And, live, and if I live until 100, I'm perfectly fine. But oh, take, advantage bless of you. The, <clears throat> excuse me, take advantage of the economical you know, up changes that are happening, the different things that Bitcoin that comes in, taking a chance on it. It's very risky, but understanding that as well. You have to take advantage of these these different shifts that's in the, going on in the economy right now. Every three to five years, things are changing dramatically, and we don't really know what's going to happen next. This new 5G project is going to be crazy. This is just the beginning of what's going to happen in technology. People don't even know yet. But taking advantage of these different uh, economical changes, investing in those, so that way you don't have to worry about the financial, uh, you know I mean, living check to check, understanding that, you know, what may happen in business with your investment, with the economy, you just don't know. Because well, most know, of these policies and investments, they are based on the economy, right? So and, and if you're talking about investing in this until you're 65 and being able to take it out, you're, you're, that's a huge risk for me. How do you help them recognize their skill set, their unique talents? And like you say on your LinkedIn, you say that you can pretty much 
get anybody to get leads and to take off with their business. But first they have to realize what that business is, right? They have to run that, realize what that is. And I put you through a series of tests and I find out exactly what you know and I provide a roadmap for you. So that way it's a lot simpler for me. It also helps you understand your business a lot better. And that's so, the whole so you that's have a process. specific program that you put people through. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit yes. about that? So, yeah, it just breaks down. Uh, it's, it's a dare to dream project that I have you kind of do it an assessment and it breaks down, you know, what your business is, what your goals for your business is and how long you've been in business, how long you plan to be in business. But it helps you think about the end game, where you're headed. And that's one of the number one questions you need to think about when you first get started in your business. So that way you don't have to worry about reinventing yourself. You already have it planned out. Hey, at this age or at this time, once I get to this part of my career, this is what I'm going to do next. And that's the process. And once you have that in mind, in the beginning, you know where you're headed and what to do. What's, I'm going to let you know what to be aware of at specific times of your career. Typically at the 10-year mark, a lot of people hit a part where they really want to expand. And it's a scary part because you might be entering into a new part of, new, part of rev, new revenue stream, right? And you don't know necessarily if you want to expand to the next level or if you want to stay where you're at. Mm -hmm. You may yeah. need to replace yourself. So that way you can do the thinking and have someone else run the business and you can kind of keep duplicating yourself. And the goal, the number one goal as an entrepreneur and as a business owner is to duplicate yourself. So that way right. you're not doing all the work because you can only, your capacity is so much even when you get started. So help yeah. you understand that. That's my goal. As an entrepreneur and a business owner, your value is so much greater than what you can pay somebody to do something for you. You know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. Even if it even if it means taking a short term pay cut so you can duplicate it in the long run, you have to think about that. Keep that in mind. So I know a lot of people who, for example, I was talking to an entrepreneur yesterday. She's been in business 13 years. She's 50 years old. Right. Her son says that one day she wants to hand it to her son. He wants to sell the business. He wants to sell it whenever he gets it. She don't want him to do that. So she's staying in business and running her business. And she's like, hey, Howard, help me design some type of transition plan, exit plan. And, and I'm explaining to her that, you know, this is, these are the things you need to think about in the beginning. But since you're here now, you have to think about what do you want to do? You can either train someone now, take a little bit of a pay cut for eight months or a year to replace you, or you continue to work until you die. What do you think of personal branding? I mean, obviously, you personal brand. You personal brand yourself. Yes. You know, what do you think yes. of the new sensation or the new mo uh, movement of everybody has a personal brand? Is that because everybody, of digital? That's because of, that's everything. And people have always had a personal brand. They just never necessarily recognized it. People always wonder when you, even when you work in a company, you say you work in sales and you're wondering, you know, I got the same training as this guy. I got the same outfit on as he do. We're all wearing the same thing. But his sales are five times better than mine or greater than mine. What am I doing wrong? And it's really understanding that people buy from people, not the company. And product sales, not the product. The product doesn't necessarily have to be great. It's the story behind the product. It's that personal brand of the person that's offering that product. And yes, personal branding is everything. So social media is a new resume, how you carry yourself, how you present yourself at all times. Those things have to match up every time that anybody sees you your LinkedIn, social media, and in person. You have to be everything you're supposed to be in order for you to have a true personal brand. So yeah, personal branding is everything, but designing the direction of that brand is very important because you don't want to become off as, or, or be anything that you're, you can't keep up. Whatever you start off with is what you have to stay with. Consistency you know, builds its own brand. Yeah, it's consistency builds its own brand and whatever you do consistently, good or bad, that's going to be a part of your brand. So just be mindful of that, that picture of your painting of yourself, that personal brand is everything. I talk about that in the book as well, where, you know, turning your ordinary business into a successful empire is my book. But we talk about. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get that, get that up there. See if you can. There we yeah, go. OK, now put it up. Put it up. OK. No, I can't see. Now we can see it. OK, now stop. Okay, go cool. down a little bit. Go down a little bit. Right. There. Stop. There we go. There we go. Now you say <laughs> awesome. That's great. Good. And where's the yes. book available? It's on Barnes and Nobles. It's on Amazon. Um, you can go to my website, HowardHughesConsults.com and purchase the book. But it's small but effective changes you can make in your business and your, you know, in your sales and your life 
to either elevate to the next level or even just grow your business. So you may not be able to relate to all 10 chapters, but you may be able to relate to, you know, maybe six. But it's it'll help you in all aspects of your life and in your business or even just getting promoted. Did you self-publish that or did you have a publisher? Self-publish, yes. You did? Self-publish my book, yes. Do you, do you tell people, you know, how publishing your own book is really a great marketing tool for your personal brand? I haven't done it's that yet, but I think it's fantastic that we are able to um, self-publish. Never used yeah, to be able to do that. Yeah, the fact that you're allowed to do that is, is amazing, and especially because you can, of course, decide who you want your book to be with. If you want it to be with Barnes & Nobles, if you want to keep it strictly Amazon, or if you just want to sell it yourself. But personal or you know, self-publishing would also help you. You have all the rights to your business, your book. Right. It's a business within itself. So I always encourage all forms of entrepreneurship at all times. So. Was it easy for you to write the book? Did it take a lot um, of time? Well, yeah. Well, I, I know the book. I know the product. I know the, uh, everything I'm talking about. So, yes, it was easy for me to talk about, but organizing my thoughts was a tough part, right? Actually yeah. deciding the chapter. So I kind of mastered it. I'm on my third book. Actually, I'm going to be publishing my next one in September. <clears throat> it's going to be called The Ultimate Entrepreneur. So be, be on the lookout for that. But I always start off with, you know, my chapters, all right? I start with my chapters and then I explain everything I can. I know about that chapter in detail, what I want the reader to understand. And then I go into, and I go back and do my and edit it. introduction and my conclusion. So oh, asked, oh, know. that's kind of cool. Any other advice that you have? I was watching a YouTube video yesterday because I really like YouTube. And this girl was about personal branding. And I thought, oh, I think I'll just listen to this, right? And she was... She she has this th method and her theory is, is that you have to just be really powerful on one social media platform. Don't try to be everything on Instagram. Don't try to be everything on Facebook. Don't try to be everything on LinkedIn. Don't try to be everything on 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 YouTube. Find your one platform and and make it make that your own. Right. Put all your energy mm -hmm. into one platform. What do you think of that strategy? I think that's a good strategy. I know some people who have taken that approach. I know even for myself, I have a stronger um, following on maybe LinkedIn versus, you know, yeah. Facebook, even Me too. And Instagram. Yeah. So it just depends on who you're, once again, if you're talking to the wrong group of people, you're going to yeah. get a different, you know, you're going to get a different look. Uh, it depends on what you're offering. So if I was a comedian, I probably wouldn't be on LinkedIn and I probably wouldn't get, get a great following. It just depends on what you're yeah. offering. Follow him on LinkedIn because he's awesome on LinkedIn. He really, 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 really um, posts a lot on LinkedIn. You can also find him at howardhughesstartup.com. As you can see, Howard is just kind of a cool, cool, nice guy. Your LinkedIn is Howard Hughes, and it's Hughes with an E at the end. Howard Hughes Consulting. Yes. Okay. So you, people can reach out and find you there. Yes, all platforms. Yes, and they can Instagram, find and they can yeah. find you on Instagram. They can find YouTube. they can buy your book. It's howardhughesconsults.com. Correct. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. and then your Facebook page is Howard Hughes Consulting, or is yes. it Howard Hughes? Okay, so this is why I got confused. Yeah. <laughs>